Today, we storyboard. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tomorrow's Filmmakers. My name is Justice McCraney, and today we're going to be talking about storyboarding. Now, what is storyboarding exactly? Storyboarding is basically you writing out your entire film in comic strip form. Every single angle, every single scene, every single camera movement, every single actor movement in your entire movie, so you basically can watch your movie from beginning to end in a comic strip form. Now, many, many, many directors do this before they actually even start filming. Steven Spielberg does this, Peter Jackson, Ridley Scott. Many famous directors do this, and there's a few reasons why. One, they let you know exactly how your film is going to play out. I mean, you can watch your film from beginning to end, so you know, hey, that scene doesn't work, hey, I don't like this angle, you know what, this is really going to work. So you can almost pretty much just watch your film from beginning to end. Two, it helps the actors see, you know, how the scene is going to play out, what's going to be required of them, what angle this is going to be, and so they can almost kind of see the movie before they start acting. And number three, the biggest one, is it makes your video shoot go a hundred times smoother and faster. Why? Because you already have every single angle written out. Because what I don't like doing is going to a video shoot that I have planned and just make up shots. Because I've done that before. I've been to shoots where I've had storyboards, been to shoots where I haven't had storyboards. You go there, you know what you want, you want the shootout, and you just kind of make up angles. You know, this angle looks good, this angle looks good, I like this. And then sometimes you realize it just wasn't a good angle, you wish you had thought about that more, you would have had this angle. But if you have the storyboards and you've already taken the time to get the angles you want, figure out exactly how you want the scene to play out, then all you have to do is go on set take your storyboards and just copy what you already have written down. So you get on set, you have your storyboards, you look and this is the exact angle that you want to have happen, this is what's going to happen in the scene, then you take your camera and you go and you set it up exactly like you've already planned it, already thought this through, already have the angle in mind, you don't have to make something up, you just go copy exactly what you already planned out. And if you have someone else manning the camera and a different cameraman and you're doing something else, then you hand the storyboards to him and say, this is how I want the shot, go set it up. And then he'll take the storyboards and set it up exactly like you already have written down. So it's stress-free, so much easier, and you're not thinking, man, is this angle going to work? Is it not going to work? Man, I should have done something else. I wish I would have thought this through. You already have it written down exactly how you want your movie to play out. Now a lot of actual movies will in the special features say storyboard comparisons and stuff like that and if you click that you can actually watch the movie as the storyboards are right next to it. So you can see the storyboards that they already had planned out, all the angles and everything while the movie is playing. So you basically can hold up a storyboard and watch the movie and follow along because it is exactly how they've already planned it in the storyboards. So today we're actually going to be learning how to do storyboards. And storyboards are a lot of fun because you can make up stuff, you can figure out exactly what you want to do, you can write it out. It's a lot of fun and I would suggest all of you guys do storyboards before you actually go film. Now you've seen all the famous storyboards and they've got all the artistic stuff and it looks great and there's shadows and there's color and it looks wonderful and then you start storyboarding yours and it looks like this. And you're like, wow, this is really disappointing and it looks really bad. But it doesn't really matter how amazing it looks as long as it gets the point across. Because what a director does, like Steven Spielberg is known for doing this, he'll actually make storyboards with stick people like we're doing now, then he'll take that, give it to an artist and then they'll draw these elaborate storyboards and make it look really, really good. But he could have actually used just the stick people storyboards just as well because that gave him exactly what he needed to go out and film. So today we're gonna to be learning about how to storyboard using color, using direction, and how you would go about doing that so you can go storyboard your film. So a basic storyboard will look something like this. Now you're gonna get a bunch of these so that you can continue to storyboard each frame. But there's gonna be four, five, six different black boxes. There's going to be writing underneath so you have a better description of what you're actually shooting. And then maybe some information up top, numbering, scene, whatever. Just different information about this certain scene. Now we actually have this template for you guys to download in the notes below so you can download, print that out, and you can get this storyboard so you can start storyboarding immediately with what you have. So now we're going to take our piece of paper and we are going to storyboard our scene. 
So in our recent short film Clocked, we have this scene where two of our main actors are having a shootout in the woods. It's kind of army, there's people around them, there's shooting, there's explosion, there's a bunch of different things. So we wanted to storyboard this before we actually went and shot, and I'm so glad I did. It made it so much easier. So we first have our character get force pushed out of the lightsabers, the clock turns, then we have him land on the ground, he sits back up, looks by the tree, sees our other character firing his gun at someone else, then it comes back to our character, he lifts up his gun, shoots over the shoulder, our other character ducks, and so on and so forth. But what you didn't know is I had all of that storyboarded and written out on these pieces of paper before we ever went and filmed. Now do I claim to be an artist when it comes to storyboarding? No, I mean it's simple, little stick people. It's just supposed to give you the idea whenever you're on set filming. So yes, some of these look really bad, but they're not supposed to look amazing. They're just supposed to give you the idea and the concept before you go actually film. So in our first scene, we have our character falling on the ground, then we have him getting back up, coming next to a tree to look past the camera at our other actor. So what are we gonna do? We have that in mind, how do we get that on paper? Well, we're just gonna draw it. So the first shot, we have him laying on the ground, just a person laying on the ground. Second, we have the shot of the tree, him getting up next to the tree. So we draw the tree, we draw him next to the tree. Gotcha, pretty simple, we understand that. Next, we see the shot over his shoulder as he looks at the other character who's firing a gun. So we draw that as well, draw him on the left, draw the characters exactly where we want them to, make sure we can see which direction that character is pointing. Then we want our character to bring his gun up and shoot, so we draw that as well. Then we want a side angle of our character shooting the gun, so we draw that as well, and so on and so forth. So this is great, we know exactly what we want to film, we know exactly the angles we want and exactly what we want to have happen. Now we can look at this frame and see how things are kind of set up, but there's a few things missing with this. One, we have no indication of movement, and we have no indication of whether the actors are moving, whether something is happening, the gun is firing, bullets are ricocheting, we have no indication of any action whatsoever, and two, we have no indication of camera movement. Does the camera pan up? Does the camera follow him? Does the camera zoom in? Does the camera move? We don't know what happens. All we know is we have these boxes of frames. That's it. So what we have to do is we have to indicate whether the actor is moving, whether an action is taking place, and where the camera is moving to. And that is where color comes in and saves the day. So if you're storyboarding, you need your pen or pencil, of course, to draw out the storyboards, but then you're gonna get two different colors. You're gonna get red and you're going to get blue. Now a red color indicates action, indicates a person moving, indicates an object moving, or indicates some sort of action inside our scene. So in our first shot, we just have this person, looks like he's lying on the ground, what happens? Well, we're gonna draw a red arrow to make it look like he lays on the ground and then gets back up. So you know that he lays on the ground and then gets back up. Second shot, the character is kind of in a laying down position coming up towards the side of the tree. But we have no indication of that. So we're gonna take a red arrow and draw that so that we know that that character is moving from the ground all the way up to the top of the tree. And it doesn't just signify movement, it also indicates action. So if our character is firing a gun, we're gonna put red at the front of the gun at the muzzle so we know that he's firing a gun. Or if there's a bunch of bullet ricochets, we're gonna put a bunch of red all over the place to show that those are bullet ricochets, that's action happening in our scene, not just movement. Now that we have shown action with a red pen or colored pencil, now it's time to show camera movement, which is going to be blue. Blue pen, blue colored pencil, whatever you wanna use. So if the camera is actually moving or panning, we're gonna actually draw a blue arrow above the frame or kind of bleeding into the frame to show that this camera is actually following this person during this shot. Or if maybe the camera is panning down, the camera is following someone, the camera is moving up, the camera is moving to the right, we're gonna draw all the arrows of our camera movement so that we know red is action, blue is camera movement. So we can automatically look at the shot, see that this actor is moving because it's red, this action is taking place, but also because the camera is blue, we know what arrow to follow, we know where the camera is going. If you want your camera to spin around, you can draw a big blue arrow, or if it's panning or anything like that, you indicate where your camera is going to with the blue marker. So now we have red with action and we have blue with camera movement. Now one thing to keep in mind is zooming with a camera. Whenever you're storyboarding a zoom, what you would think is, hey, it starts out really far away from his face, and then the camera's gonna end up really close to his face. So I'm gonna draw two storyboards, one really far away, one really close. Sure, if you really wanted to do that, but that's just gonna waste storyboard space. We understand, yeah, he's zooming. So what you wanna do, which is actually really cool, is you have the original frame where the camera's gonna start, then you draw a blue box to where the camera is going to end up at. 
So in this case, Scott sees the grenade next to him and the camera kind of pushes in a little bit as Scott looks down at the grenade, realizes it's about to explode, so we want the camera to push in. So we draw the original frame, then we draw the blue box to where the camera is going to end up at, then we draw arrows in which direction it's going. If it's pulling away, we'll draw arrows the other way. But in this case, we have the frame wide. Then we draw the blue box where we want the frame to end, whether that's a zoom or whether that's a push in, it doesn't matter. Then we draw the lines on the sides to show that this camera is actually pushing in. And there we go, we have our zoom on paper. And we're not wasting a bunch of storyboards and you know, saying doing all the different types of zooms. We have shown where the camera is starting and where the frame is going to end. And after you've done all that, you have the red for action, the blue for camera movement, you have the scene pretty much laid out, but you also wanna go ahead and give a little description of what's actually happening. Cause is this a zoom? Is this a push in? Am I panning down? Is the actress doing something? What's happening? So you wanna go ahead and give a short description. You can make it long, you can make it short, whatever you want about the actual scene. Simple as that. You just wanna give a small description of what is actually happening in your scene. And one of my favorite things to do is after you have the movie completed, you can go ahead and take each individual frame and storyboard and watch it as your movie is happening. Now sometimes in the field you have spur of the moment ideas, that angle sounds good and you do it, or sometimes in the moment you're like, you know what, that's actually not gonna work, and sometimes that happens. You don't have to get every single frame. But this gives you a basic understanding of what you actually want to have happen in your scene. That way you can take these, go out on the field, have them with you, get the angle, realize what's next, realize maybe actually in this position we're gonna have a couple different shots. So we're gonna go ahead and just get all of those shots right here while we have the actors here. It just makes it so much faster, so much easier. So now that we have everything storyboarded, we can go ahead and film it, and then after we get done, we can do a storyboard comparison of this scene. So go find some of your favorite movies, look on the special features, see if they have a storyboard comparison. Sometimes they do and it is so cool to watch because you can see the techniques that they used, how they wrote it, how it looks, and get better understanding of how you're gonna storyboard your film. So I hope this video has really helped you guys out on storyboarding and how you're gonna storyboard. So go download the template, start storyboarding your short film, even if it's just a minute long short, go ahead and storyboard it, see how it works, see what doesn't work, Try to storyboard your entire film before you even start filming it, and you will see how much it helps. So go ahead and post your storyboards on the Tomorrow's Filmmakers community page. We'd love to see them. If you have any advice or things that you've learned, go ahead and share it with us. We'd love to hear it. So head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have videos just like this that we're putting out constantly to help you as you further God's kingdom through film, and I'll see you guys there.